Hey guys, back at it in the background. But before I get fully into this, I, I wanted to address something right quick. Um, I'm going to link up here in the top corner a video that I want to talk to for a moment, and that is the video that I made over a year ago now about the bad customer experience that I had with Vans Aircraft. I get a lot of comments, a lot of uh, both positive and negative uh, feedback regarding that video. Uh, the positive commenters are usually in support of me saying that what they did was uncalled for and that they'll never use Vans. And that wasn't my goal. <clears throat> I, I don't want you to think that I'm saying don't ever use Vans, boo boo boo. Usually those are the people that I haven't watched the rest of my video. The negative commenters are the, what I can only describe as the hardcore fanboys who are sending some hate my way because how dare I comment negatively about their beloved aircraft manufacturer. Again, I have to think these are people that haven't watched the rest of my videos. Um, so just to set the record straight, um, I am not in any way financially supported or remunerated by Vans Aircraft, which means I have the luxury of being completely honest with you guys. And like any other facet in life, I think it would be intellectually dishonest for me to just say all the good things without showing you the bad things, right? So I try to show both sides. When they do good, I say, hey, they did good. When they do bad, I say, hey, they did bad. That's it. That's all that went on there in that video, and that's all that's gone on through the rest of my videos. Um, I am very keen on Vans, otherwise I would not be buying one of their planes. Um, I, I just ordered the fuselage kit. That was a big check. Um, and I, you know, I can't wait to build the next one. I kind of have in my mind what I want to build next, and it is still in the Vans fleet. Really different, but in the Vans fleet. Having said that, though, if I wanted to, I could talk about other really cool airplanes that are out there that are not part of the Vans fleet. For example, I would love to own a Black Shape Prime. Have you looked at those things? Those look amazing. Airplane out of Italy. Take a look. I'll try to remember to put a link down below. Um, and, you know, or a Bristel or some other LSA. They're just really cool planes. I, the, I can say whatever I want, and just because I said something negative one time about experience I had, doesn't mean I'm down on them. It doesn't mean that uh, you should steer away from them. It was one experience. I think overall, by far, my experiences have been very positive. They've been good, they've been kind, they're responsive, they're fast. I had one bad experience once and I detailed it. But I've also talked about my good experiences. I've also talked about all the times they did a good job. So do us both a favor and uh, maybe watch all the videos or watch more of the videos before you guys jump to conclusions and start uh, flaming me uh, in personal and private messages. I would really appreciate it and it would make you look a little more intelligent. So anyways, guys, thanks. Um, and as always, you know, I want this to be a conversation. So if you guys feel like I have been too harsh, uh, comment down below. Or if you feel like I'm, you know, positive and, and easy to get along with too, you, down below comment you know uh it only helps me get better and in the end that's what this is about i mean this is about me not only creating these videos for my own entertainment and motivation but also because i like to have the conversation here and uh aviation is awesome i'm just rambling now so anyways thanks You'll notice right here that I'm actually using the DRDT2 to do all my dimpling as opposed to the C-frame. And I know I had said previously that I was going to do a major skin piece with the C-frame and then the, the same one with the DRDT2 to just to make sure or to get some idea as to whether one dimples better than the other. I decided not to do it on the tank. Uh, I'm going to do it on the bottom skins for the wings. One I'm going to do with the DRDT2 and the other one I'm going to do with the uh, C-frame Whack-A-Mole. Uh, the reason I decided to do it there is because it is a bottom skin it'll be a little less visible uh, whereas with these particular tanks uh, I wanted a consistent look across both the top and the bottom uh, so that's why I'm not doing it here even though it does say in the plan specifically for this part to use the C-frame 
I made a choice to go the other way. Now you'll see here in this picture, this is the table that I've built around my uh, DRDD2. If, if, uh, if you're gonna get one of these, and I do recommend them, they're really good, I would say make that table a little longer. You'll see me sometimes moving boxes and other things around just to get like a piece of leverage because the skin will go way far, you know, off and kind of hang off and it's a little awkward. So if you're gonna build the table, um, that one's about three and a half feet. You want it to be like, six you know because that's that's realistically the long as long as your skins are gonna be is about about six um, yeah every once in a while while dimpling the skin especially down towards the bottom right near that curve you're gonna see me reach down and kind of lift the bottom of that skin or the lower part of that skin up before I do the dimple the idea is as you can see here is there's a little bit of a curve where that flat piece is coming down and I want to even that out and make the whole thing flat before I make the dimple or else it could result in kind of an ugly dimple and we don't want that this is the leading edge of the skin this is the part of the plane like when people walk up to the wing they're going to see that first so we want those to look as good as possible I'm going to try to blaze through this really quickly I've got all of these pieces yet to countersink before I get on to the final assembly of the fuel tank uh, fun fun um, basically on all of these I'm going to be countersinking all of the round edges um, and not these flats and I'm going to be using my squeezer because it's amazing and awesome in all ways. Uh, I highly recommend one. So this takes a while, so I'm going to speed this up real fast. I had to take a number of breaks holding that squeezer. I mean, it's heavy and uh, there's just a bunch of holes and it's just repetition. You've seen me do it before. Uh, I give a little zoom in of what I was doing, but basically I'm doing the round edges, not the flats, because the flats are uh, not part of the skin. Basically, any place that you have dimpled the skin, the rib touches, you're going to dimple there too. Um, so while that goes by real quick in the background, uh, I wanted to give everyone an update. I am in the process of ordering the fuselage. Uh, so even though I'm not quite there yet, I've probably got, you know, a month or two more to work on the wings just because, you know, it's been the slow build on the wings. Um, I've gone ahead and reached out to Vans. I sent them an email asking what it's going to cost. Uh, and the reason I asked is because apparently there's a new law in Georgia where you have to pay sales tax. That sucks. Um, that really sucks because I think once you have the plane fully built, you have to pay an ad valorem tax, which means you get taxed twice. Uh, that's going to upset me. If anyone knows anything about that, if you'd leave a comment down below, uh, I'd really appreciate it because I, I don't... I don't look forward to being double dipped. Um, other than that, uh, I did reach out to the people at Oshkosh. I'm definitely going. Um, I will be bringing my motorhome. Uh, so I'm gonna try to set up my Jeep so it can tow behind my motorhome and I'll be there. Uh, but I can't get the um, motorhome hookups, like a spot with uh, power and water and, and all that until the 29th of June. I was like, wow, okay, uh, until, you know, like you can order a regular camping spot now, but I can't actually order a camping spot for an RV, a uh, motorhome, uh, until June 29th. It seems like last second, but okay. So that's going to happen here soon. Oh, we're done. So the next thing I'm going to be working on is the tank attach bracket sub assembly. So this part might look familiar to some of you. This was the part that I had previously had to call Vans about because I was really unsure as to how to proceed. Thankfully, I've already done one. It is correct. Um, according to people around here told me it was correct. So uh, I think I'll be able to get this one done in pretty short order. Uh, this really, it only comes down to uh, four main parts and then a bunch of uh, nut plates that you have to put on this sucker. Uh, those main parts are this, which is the actual sub-assembly, the, the, the main bracket itself. These two shims, uh, which come together as one, and then you cut them, cut them apart and, you know, deburr and, and clean it up. Uh, this bearing right here, um, the primary bearing that obviously goes right there. There's only one place it could go. Uh, and then of course the nut plates, which I don't have set out here. Basically the, the 
the, the, there's really nothing hard about this. Uh, now that I've figured it out, you kind of have to study the plans quite a bit and make sure that you know what you're doing. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind, especially when you're doing your second wing, is that everything is mirrored. So because the plans were written with the right wing in mind and this is the left wing in mind, I now have to mirror everything. So that means even though it may look a little slightly different, this you know, can only go on here one way, and if you put it the other way, it's going to be wrong. Um, and with that, by the way, with this particular piece, um, it's fairly obvious because one side has two holes and the other side doesn't. And so it literally can only go on here one way. Same thing with this, sh this shim. This shim's even easier. It can only go on, on here one way because the holes all line up. Uh, this goes back to that whole magical thing that Vans was able to do with, get, with getting holes on two completely different separate parts matching up and I don't know how they did that computers um, and then finally with uh, the 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 nut plates and this bearing again really super easy to work with uh, you will have to machine countersink this as well as machine countersinking everything on this this rolled side here and on this rolled side here because this is where the skin is so that's what I'm going to be doing and if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Okay, so as you see me working on this in the background, uh, I thought I would answer a question that I got a couple days ago, and that was regarding uh, whether or not I had made a mistake uh, in dimpling the, the wings or the, nut, the attach points for a nut plate. Uh, and the answer is no. There are a couple places in the plane where you're gonna have to dimple those two side attach points uh, in a nut plate just due to where they are. And this is actually one of them. Um, in this piece right here, these two uh, outer uh, nut plates that you're gonna, that you're gonna uh, um, amount on here, they actually have to be dimpled because the skin is dimpled. So this is just one example of one of the places where you're gonna have to do that. Generally speaking, anything that goes up against the skin is dimpled. Not always, because there are some places where you don't dimple because there's gonna be you know, plastic or something else covering the hole so you don't actually have to dimple right there. But I mean, the vast majority of any, um, any place there is skin with something touching the skin, the skin is dimpled, and the thing under it is either dimpled or machine countersunk. Uh, so it'll meet up and that's that's the case here as well and I'll give you a close-up on that right here uh, basically again we've got the tank attach uh, bracket sub assembly we've got this bearing that's mounted here it's mounted on the outside um, of this remember the skin's gonna go around the curve this way and the after the aircraft is that way I've got this top piece here you've got these these two that are both dimpled with the nut plates so these are the uh, k1108 or 11008 nut plates and then on the inside there's the smaller nut plates on both sides there's actually a <laughs> there's a lot of different nut plates on this guy um, and then then you have the other shim down here so there's one here's the small shim on the bottom the larger shim on top with the with the two nut plates you know forward uh, and then the uh, uh, bearing right here. I went ahead and machine countersunk all these because remember the skin's going to go up against this. You want to go ahead and, and uh, machine countersink those because the skins are dimpled on both sides of course. And to answer the question what I was just talking about a second ago, these two nut plates which are dimpled have to be also dimpled on the attach points for the nut plates themselves. That's actually in the plans at uh, page 18-5, step number four. So, uh, and there are a bunch of those, but that's where I'm at on this guy. And now I'm gonna do the final assembly on this so I can move on to uh, goop. Ugh, I hate goop. There you go, guys. That's where I'm gonna end this one. I really appreciate everybody. If you really like what I'm doing in this video, if you'd click that like and subscribe button down there, uh, it really helps my rankings. And if you would like to subscribe, I would recommend clicking the bell icon as well. That way you get notifications every time I make an update. I'm not sure why that's a new thing. Um, if you wanna help support this channel, uh, you can join my Patreon feed and I'll have a link down below. And just for a dollar a month, basically, you can uh, just let me know that you like what I'm doing here and support me. 
you're just buying me a cup of coffee. I really appreciate all my patrons. I love you guys. You're the ones that are making this happen. And if you really want to build a plane, do it. You can. If I can build a plane, you can build a plane. If you use my builder number when you order your plane, fans will send me a hundred bucks, which, hey, has no money out of your pocket. And it really tells me that you guys appreciate what's going on. So thank you very much, everybody. I'll see you next time.